really what brought me back on the table. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how long Oh, about two years. Yeah. Bill, uh, let's go back to the start now. No. That old thing. 1900 and freezing cold as Arslavsky says. Now, you're one of the first guys to star on television in comedy, back in the very early days, in the early 1950s. From your point of view, how much has television really changed? Well, the, the, the main change, of course, I, when, when I started, yes, around that time, about 52, um, the main difference, of course, is that now, really, you don't do anything live. In those days, when I used to do things like Great Scott is Main Eye with, with Terry Scott, who we know and love, uh, <coughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we used to do that every week live, and that, that was terrifying, I mean, to actually the pressure of having to go on there that night and get it right the first time. It was, it, it was frightening. I mean, now, it's, it, it, looking back, I, I, I shall never know how we did it. I suppose it's a question of you've got to, so you do it. But now, I mean, when I do, when I do Selwyn or I, The Life of Riley, any of the comedies that I've ever done in front of an audience, I mean, we'll have about 10 or 15 breaks, you know, where I go wrong, which, of course, in those days, you just couldn't, you couldn't do. Now, also, after those early television series, you disappeared from view for quite a long time, mm. which must have been pretty traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't actually, because, uh, I mean, most people, looking back, most people thought I'd died, of course. <laughs> um, but in actual fact, I, I instigated it all, you know. I mean, I was the one who said, right, I'm not doing any more Great Scottish Maynards. I don't want to do any more television. I want to learn to be, to be an actor. I want to... Uh, because, basically, I always wanted to be... A, a, a film star. So it know. was a voluntary thing then? Oh yes, I mean I, I, which is why I still don't really get much work from the BBC. I mean this is true, I mean uh, I was told that at that time that I was on a sort of semi-blacklist because I refused to do any more programmes. Uh, because at that time you see Terry Scott and I were getting £60 a week each for the top comedy show on television, uh, which wasn't a, a lot of money even in those days. And. Uh, you know, quite honestly, you couldn't manage on it. I mean, it was that was the sort of figure one worked for in those days because, of course, the BBC had the monopoly. So I, as I say, I opted out because I wanted to go and learn to act, and I went, I went to to learn to act, um, and I went all around the reps for years and years, finishing up most of the time I, I spent at Nottingham Playhouse, you know, doing all all the classics. And it's lovely to look back on it now when somebody comes up to me and says, "Have you ever thought of doing um, the Entertainer? You know, it's a very good play." And, I, I said, yes, well, I won the Actor of the Year Award for that in 1961. You know, it's nice, and it, people bring up things like, you know, The Caretaker, or I did all the, the, the roles I'd always wanted to do, all those, Truscott in Luke, Davis in The Caretaker, Elwood P. Dowd in Harvey. Now, outside of television, I believe you have a great love of going around schools giving lectures on a very great assortment of subjects. Yeah, well, um... I suppose what it is, it's it, 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 it for me, really. It's not for them. I always I say, now, don't think that I'm doing this for you um, because I do it free, you know. I don't, I, it's for me because I really enjoy it. I'm, in a strange way, I miss the opportunity of being able to sort of uh, um, open my mouth on the stage, you know, because I don't do a, a turn these days. That's why I like to do after-dinner speaking and things like that. But I find that it's great to go around to the school speaking to the sort of fifth and sixth formers, who were, some of them are interested in drama, and it usually starts off about, you know, what made you play Selwyn, or what made you go into the theatre, and it, it, I usually do about two hours, and it gets right underneath, and I, and I find it fascinating, the sort of questions that they ask, they all ask exactly the same questions, and it shows that they've all got exactly the same sort of fears, problems, hopes, and desires. So what is the most common question you get then? Oh, um, well, the most common question I suppose I get is, do you prefer playing comedy to drama or the other way around? You see, that's probably the, the, that's very... But one question that, that I find we get a lot of, we are able to delve uh, backward and forth with, is the fact when they say, you know, what is it like to be a star? Is it as good as it looks? Or do you sometimes wish you did an ordinary job? And on that, you could, you see, you, you go into the fact that b when you're a star, it is a very lonely, it can be, it's not for me now because I'm on my second time around, and it's like a love affair, the second time <laughs> around is always much more comfortable. 
uh, because you 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 know you know the pitfalls. And if you if you you can see that what you're going to do is a mistake, but you still do it because you want to. Um, and I think that's the important thing. I'm now very experienced, and I can now walk into a place, and it doesn't worry me if somebody w comes up and wants an autograph. I'm delighted. You know, and they say, you don't mind us asking, and I always, I'm able to say to experience, no, for 15 years, nobody asked me. Yes. You know, and that's right. marvellous. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great leveller, you see. And this is the sort of, this is the sort of thing we, st we, we go into. And, it, and, and also, within it comes up things like religion and politics and things like that, because, I mean, I've found that, although I'm not a great believer in the, in the uh, theatrics of, of religion, you know, of the, of the church bit, I found that in my in my um, depths of despair, when I was when I because I I went skint and I lost my house and everything, you know, and I had to give everything up and live in a room again, you know, and my wife had to go to work, and this was after I'd been a star. Um, I, I found that following the the principles of Christianity helped me greatly, you know, and and so I can talk about that, and I'm, and and for me, you see, it I suppose comes slightly differently because I'm you know supposed to be a bit, a bit bleh, and you know, it doesn't care too much, and I haven't been terribly careful in my life. And I think because I'm able to point that out, by me saying it, it makes the kids think, oh, you know, if, if the bloke we know as Selwyn found a use for that, we might find a use for it. And uh, that's the sort of thing we talk about. And with your married life, that's been going a long time now, too, isn't it? How yeah, has yeah. that survived all these traumas and showbiz? Well, it's had its ups and downs, but, um, you know, I mean, uh, now it's wonderful. It's like everything else, if you can get over the first sort of 25 years. <laughs> it's <laughs> marvellous. But, I mean, the thing is that it's been my experience that, I mean, a, 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 woman, a, a, a woman's magazine once rang me up and was talking about um, unfaithfulness and this sort of thing. And this is, this is, she said to me, what would be your advice to any woman who thought that her husband was having an affair? And I said, the best advice I can give you is tell yourself that he is doing because there's not many that don't. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do that, and if you assume the worst, it's bound to be better. But don't think, oh God, he couldn't. I'm telling you, oh yes, he could. <laughs> I made it sound a bit like a pantomime, but that, 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 that I found to be true. I mean, all, all my mates, it may be that I know a lot of people who are a bit that way inclined, but it has been my experience that most chaps, anyway, do at some time. And it's happening a lot to the girls, I'm pleased to say. I was born about 30 years too late. <laughs> Right, the future now. Um, going back to the showbiz side of things. That's if there is a future after <laughs> this. Right. Yes. Yeah. Now, what, what what is it for you? Is it um, more acting, more directing? Um, well, I I'm I'm getting to the stage now. I don't like necessarily. I don't like the discipline of having to go on stage every mo every night now. I've had it for so long. I've had it for so many years that I mean, if somebody offered me a, a lead in the West End of London in a beautiful part, I mean, I wouldn't do it. I just I just. Uh, I've lost that the I've lost that thing that you need to go on stage every night. I I don't like doing that. I like first night. I love the rehearsals. Love the first night, but after that it becomes very boring. I'm ready in a way to sort of I would like to retire very gently in the way that it is going now, where I don't have to go on stage every night, but I'm able to do things like direct some plays or do some telly preferably drama because it's wonderful to be able to do drama it's so lovely and relaxing i mean you when you're doing a comedy your your option comes up every five seconds you know if you don't get a laugh you're dead and what what i think retirement is 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 losing all the pressures that being able to do just a bit of something but not have all all those pressures that you have to that you need and are necessary when you're young i think it's just nice to retire gracefully <laughs>